What's up, gangsters? Are you guys ready to, um, let's talk movies? It's the, it's the last one for now, so it, it's all good. It's basically just some, some random movies, like, like random releases on, on, on DVD and, and Blu-ray, as well as some series. Well, two. So, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's just start with that. Get out of the way. First, Rick and Morty. This, I presume, needs no further introduction, since everybody and their mom is talking about it, to a degree that it's almost become cool not to like the show due to its toxic fan base. But I don't really care about any of that. <laughs> I, I just love the show, especially the, the first two seasons. I just think it's funny, I, I like the animation, they explore some interesting themes. It's, it's just a good show. Ha! It's um, Little Britain. The first two seasons, or, or series, since it's uh, Britain. Little Britain. It's a sketch comedy series that's <laughs> so stupid and repetitive, but uh, I just can't help myself just loving it. Part of the joke, or, or comedy, is the fact that it's so repetitive. I mean, most of the reoccurring sketches have the exact same punchline over and over again. Which does mean that if you don't like a certain sketch, it, it, it kind of sucks if it is a reoccurring one. Still, I am. Uh, yeah, I like it quite a lot. Then, onto the movies, first Blu-rays, and we'll start with Singapore Sling. And uh, boy oh boy, what a weirdly unique movie this is. It's um, it's hard to describe. I tried to when I covered it as part of my disturbing movie series, but it is really a movie you'll have to see for yourself. I was very happy to learn that they released this English-friendly Blu-ray in Germany, and that, from what I understand, it's even a Son of the Director approved release. I can't read anything on the on the back or, or the booklets since it's all German, but still pretty awesome. Er nennt sich Singapore Schling, einer dieser Typen, die ständig hoffnungslosen Fällen hinter die Blood for Dracula, the sequel, if you will, to Flash for Frankenstein, which I absolutely adore. Again, directed by Paul Morrissey and co-produced by Andy Warhol, and again starring Udo Kier and Joey D'Alessandro, I have yet to see this one. <laughs> I just hope it's as, as weirdly amusing as Flash for Frankenstein. And just like Flash for Frankenstein, I got this on the Australian release from Cinema Cult. Monstrosity, also known as The Atomic Brain. I got this Blu-ray as a perk for backing up the restoration project created by Ben Solovey, who previously successfully restored and released Manos The Hands of Fate on Blu-ray. I don't know that much about this movie, to be honest, besides the fact that it is the only movie directed by cinematographer Joseph V. Maselli, who's perhaps best known for having written the to-go handbook when it comes to cinematography. That's, uh, it's cool. But, um, yeah, I uh, still have to watch the movie. Next up, ah, Spring Breakers, from everybody's favorite director, Harmony Korine. If you've seen my The Films of Harmony Korine video, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of this movie. And I'm still not, but I found this used mint condition Blu-ray for like two euros, so I was like, what the heck? I mean, aesthetically, I, I still think it's it's pretty great. Overall, it could have just been a, a little better, but um, yeah, check out that video to find out more about this movie and its director, if you'd like. Ah, now this one I do like, Train to Busan. Released in 2016, this Korean zombie action movie became pretty popular pretty fast and well deserved, so I'd say. It's by no means perfect, but it is a very entertaining movie, even with a, with a little bit of heart to it. I did a standalone video review on this movie, so be sure to check that one out if you've never heard of this one before, or, you know, just check out the movie. So, when the new IT movie was about to be released, I realized that I had never fully seen the 1990 made-for-TV adaptation of Stephen King's IT. Or, or at least, not that I remembered. So, I got the Blu-ray. I'm pretty sure most people know about this one. Some might remember it to be scarier or better than it actually is. <laughs> and that's why I made a video about it leading up to the release of the new IT. So yeah, um, you can check out that video too, if you want, of course. And here we have a box set of everybody's other favorite filmmaker, The World of Marian Dora. Dora is a German filmmaker, probably best known for his controversial movies Cannibal and Melancholy der Engel. And this box set comes with Melancholy der Engel and also Reise nach Achates und Debris Dokumentar. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a shame that it doesn't come with Cannibal. It also doesn't have his latest movie, Casinoma. Ca Ca Casinoma? But 
I, I believe that one wasn't available yet at the time that they produced this box set. What we do get is a whole bunch of short movies, way more than he has listed on IMDb. So yeah, um, I, I can't say that I'm a big fan of Mario Andorra, but I do somewhat appreciate his artistic approach. I already owned Melancholy Der Engel on DVD, but this release doesn't come with subtitles since it's a uh, German release, and since it's a German movie, I had no idea what was really going on. Reise nach Agatis sounds kinda interesting, and Debris Documenta? <laughs> well, after seeing my, my buddy Otto Bach's review on that movie, I'm not quite sure if I really want to see it. But hey, um, morbid curiosity makes you do stupid things, so um, yeah, um, hooray for this uh, box set. Remember when we talked about Melancholy der Engel? Well, uh, <laughs> let's revisit that with this zero-budget documentary revisiting Melancholy der Engel. I actually came across this one on IMDb a while back and thought, oh, that, that, that might be interesting. But I figured that there was no way that I was ever going to see it. Until I went to this small local film festival last summer, the Butt Film Festival, where Gino from Zeno Pictures was selling it at his little booth. And this is where I as well got the, uh, the Dora box set. So, um, yay. The documentary itself was a little uh, underwhelming, disappointing though. It's just the documentary filmmaker meeting up with Mario Andorra, revisiting some of the filming locations and talking. You get a bit of an insight into the director and his infamous movie, but not to a degree that I'd hoped. It's it's okay, but I, I'd only recommend it to hardcore fans, if <laughs> those exist. This one, also bought at the Bud Film Festival, about equally as obscure. Yet another documentary, Art Crime. Back in 2009, a French-Canadian special effects makeup artist Rémy Couture was arrested based on some of the photos and videos that appeared on his now-defunct website, innerdepravity.com, because they thought it might be real. But <laughs> he's just a pretty good makeup artist. And well, this movie is about that case. Apparently the documentary itself isn't that exciting or, or even well made, but this this topic interests me quite a bit. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm still still pretty curious. Next up, The Boxer's Omen, a Hong Kong black magic horror movie that is one of the more crazy, wild, bizarre and fun movies I've seen in a long time. It tells the story of a man who wants to take revenge and does so by diving into some black magic. Oh man, it's it's something you really have to see for yourself, which is something I also brought up when I recently recommended it during my The Best Movies I've Seen in 2017 video. Yeah, definitely worth seeking out. In the previous Let's Talk Movies video, I covered some non-splotation movies as well as some Joey D'Amato movies, and here they both come together in Images in a Convent. From what I understand, it's it's mostly just a somewhat mediocre but explicit sexploitation movie. I mean, because I haven't seen it yet, so my expectations aren't too high. But uh, you know, I I like the cover, and, and and this used but seemingly in excellent condition DVD was pretty cheap, <laughs> especially if you look up prices online. So I was like, um, what the hell? And what do we have here? It's Love Objects, a horror movie with a very dark sense of humor that I unfortunately don't hear people talking about that often. Which is a shame because it's uh, it's quite a lot of fun. It's about this socially awkward guy that somehow gets entangled in a weird love triangle with a female co-worker and his sex doll. <laughs> It's pretty great. I actually talked about it a good while back in my uh, best movies I've seen in 2015 video. So uh, yeah, check it out. I Stand Alone. The feature length debut from controversial French filmmaker Gaspard Noé. And this one is pretty great. It's about a man with a bit of a nihilistic approach to life trying to get his shit together. It's, it's dark, even a bit disturbing, if you will. Speaking of, I wanted to add that I did cover this one in the 10th the part of my uh, disturbing movie series, but Jeez, do I hate that video, it's so cringy. Which sucks, because I cover a lot of good, like, interesting movies in a video. Ah, and it got a lot of views, it's like, ah. And, well, dislikes, because I act like a fucking idiot. But, um, yeah, um, great movie. Not so great release, though, since the movie on this release is Letterboxd and has burned in subtitles, so I can't get the movie to display properly on my television without the subtitles being cut off. It's the fucking worse, it's like, ah. 
But yeah, um, love letters of a Portuguese nun. If you hadn't noticed before, I've been getting into the nunsploitation genre quite a bit lately. And this one, directed by Jess Franco no less, is actually a lot better than you'd expect. I mean, it was definitely a lot better than I'd expect. Sure, it's a, it's a little slow, but the simple but effective story and, and definitely the, the, the look, the cinematography, make up for that quite a bit. If you're into this genre, it's well worth checking out next to perhaps more popular examples like Alucarda and Satanic Pandemonium. Just to uh, name a uh, two. Alleluia, from uh, Belgian director Fabrice Duvels. Inspired by the story of an American serial killer couple known as the Lonely Hearts Killers, this is a pretty original and great contribution to the serial killer genre. I recommended slash talked about it the other day in my uh, best movies I've seen in 2017 video. My girlfriend actually already owned it on Blu-ray, but we, we live a little far apart, so when we came across this DVD here for pretty cheap, she was like, get it, because she wanted to show me the director's debut short movie, which was added as a special feature, but as it turns out, without subtitles. So we couldn't really watch it, so it was kind of a waste. I have seen it since, actually, with subtitles, the, the short, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty fun. La Pianiste. In English, The Piano Teacher. And this one I bought together with Alleluia because it was something like a, a, a 2 for 10 type of deal. Directed by Michael Haneke. This one has been on my watch list since forever, but I <laughs> still have yet to see it. I know it's supposed to be pretty out there and I will probably like it. The only thing I have to do is just <laughs> actually watch it. People out here that would um, recommend this one? Children of Man, the 2006 dystopian thriller by Alfonso Cuaron. Is that right? Cuaron? Which is probably the most well known movie in this whole video. Or, you know, in this whole. All the four Let's Talk Movies videos. I haven't seen it since forever, but I remember it being pretty good. With some amazing long single take shots along the ride. And in one scene literally along the ride. Am I right? I bought this DVD when I was at this huge swap meet with my girlfriend and, you know, I wanted to buy at least something. So I got this movie and... This one. I love you, man. Not a lot of people here might know this, probably because of the, <laughs> the content of my channel, but I, I do enjoy a, a fun comedy every now and then. For example, I, I love a lot of the Judd Apatow comedies from the 2000s, and even though this one isn't produced by him, I feel like it fits in, you know, that, that category of, of comedy pretty well. It's about a bromance. It's fun. Come on. Likeable characters, likeable actors, in my opinion. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's just good fun. And Finally, finally, Cannibal the Musical. The directorial debut of South Park co-creator Trey Parker. It's another one of those movies that have been on my watch list for as long as I can remember, but that for some reason I have still never seen. So uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to tell you about this one, and I'm just gonna hand it over to you guys. Do some of you recommend me to watch this one as, um, as soon as possible? Let me know. Yeah, and that um, brings us back to the outro. As well as the end of the, the Let's Talk Movies videos for now. I mean, I don't buy move, like new movies on, on Blu-ray DVD that often, so it'll probably take me a good while before I have enough new releases, uh, you know, to, to fill a, a, a new video like this. So yeah, um, please, one more time, let me know what you thought about these, these videos, you know, the, the, this format. I mean, I, I know there must be a, at least a few people out there that appreciate these um, random recommendations slash collection update videos. I mean, um... Wait. Please leave a message. It's not picking up. Jesus, who else can I call? Who, who else watches my videos? Hey, you're ready. Hey, guys, I am recording a video and you have to tell the audience how much you like my collection updates videos. The collection of your video? Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's all for now. The next video will be, uh, you know, once again, a, a more like regular horrible reviews video. So uh, that's, you know, maybe that's something to look forward to. Let's, um, well, let's, let's do that. See you guys then and uh, cheers.